Hey, beautiful people. Oh my gosh, you have just tuned in to a very special video. Every Sunday in December, starting December 10th through December 31st, I'm going to feature an interview that I'm conducting with a child-free married couple or a child-free married person if their husband or wife is not in the video. So I thought this would be very interesting because I know as a child-free person, I get a lot of backlash about being child-free. And I just thought to myself one day, like, I know for certain you know, that child-free married people may get the same type of backlash, if not more. So I just thought to explore, you know, that side of being child-free. And I wanted to bring more diverse content to the channel. So if you're watching this and something resonates with you, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Enjoy the video. See you soon. <laughs> Well, hey Nicole, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this YouTube series that I'm doing. And you know, before we get started with our conversation, just tell us a little bit more about yourself, like where you're from, things like that. Sure. So my name is Nicole. Um, I'm 34 years old. I'm from Rockville, Maryland, which is about 45 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. And I work as an office manager at a podiatrist office. My husband and I have been together for 14 years, but we just celebrated our seventh wedding anniversary. Um, so he's, he's been around for quite a while. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so how did you two meet? So we actually, we met at a church. Neither of us attended the church. I was with a friend and he was going to like a college youth group meeting and he asked me to join him. And um, my husband, Nick, was dropping off his sister for something different and decided to just stay for the college youth group meeting. And we met there. We just kind of hit it off. Um, he likes to say that I pursued him, but, <laughs> you know, um, so we just we met and we just clicked and it's history from there. Awesome. That's lovely. I love it. Okay. So, um, you know, when did you make up the decision to be child free? Did you always know that you didn't want children or how did, you know, how did that work out for you? So for me, it came a little bit later, like in my twenties. Um, and for me, it was sort of interesting because my whole childhood, my whole life, I was very passionate about being a mom and I just really, you know, wanted kids. Motherhood was something that I really wanted I knew like around what age I wanted to have kids, how many kids I had. I had names picked out. Um, I even wanted to be a stay at home mom if that was possible, um, like my mom. And then I guess as I got a little bit older, I just started to realize, was this something I really wanted or did I want it because I just saw it? And I just felt like that was the norm to do. Like you got married, you had kids because um, you know, it was just like, like society. Is that just something that society I saw? So I was like, well, that's what, that's what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And then as time went on and I got a little bit older, my friends started having kids and I kind of started to see, I guess, like behind the scenes, I guess you could say the things that went on. And I was like, Hmm, maybe this isn't really for me. And it was sort of like an overnight thing. Like I just woke up one day mm -hmm. and I was like, I really I actually don't think I want kids. Um, but I think a lot of factors played into that. I have um, anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking into it, you know, during pregnancy, I'd have to come off of my medication. And, it, you know, they always say if the mom isn't in the mentally right state, the baby, you know, it affects the baby as well. Mm -hmm. And then just if I did decide to breastfeed the same thing, and it's not fun for anybody when I'm not, <laughs> you know, when I don't take my medication, because my anxiety, and you know, just goes through the roof. And I was like, do I want to put myself through that or my kids through that or my husband? And I think it just all kind of came to a head one day. And I was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't think this is for me. Wow. You know, that's awesome that you came to that self-realization that, you know, it wouldn't be the best for you mentally or the child or your husband. And that's really commendable because I don't think a lot of people take that into, into consideration before they decide to have a family. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people... Yeah. A lot of people say things like child, child free people are selfish, 
but and I always say, you know, we're not selfish, we're self-aware. And what you just explained is the perfect example as to what I, you know, really mean by that. So yeah. And I I'm sorry, I was gonna say, and I think also in a way, I sometimes, I mean, I think people do view it as selfish because I will be very honest and say, I am not ready to put my life aside for, you know, for somebody else. Like, and obviously we have kids as they should, they become, you know, you love them and everything you do is for them. And I just, it it does sound kind of selfish, but I'm just not, I'm not ready to do that. I don't think I ever want to do that. I mean, even something as simple as giving up my sleep, I don't want to, I'm not ready. (laughs) So do you have any siblings? And if so, are you the eldest sibling? I am. I have a younger brother who is actually, uh, my sister-in-law is expecting her first child uh, this month around Christmas. Um, you know, my younger brother were about two and a half years apart. And I think I did, I do have that motherly nurturing side because I've always felt very protective of him and, you know, caring. And even as an adult, it's just, I, I take care of my brother. Um, and you know, when he's sick and stuff, I want to make sure he's okay. So Mm -hmm. I think I do have that nurturing side, but I just, I just don't want to be a mom. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. Definitely. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to stick to the questions here, but I'm trying to make this sound conversational too. (laughs) I get these questions here. Um, So I'm curious to know, what was your your husband's reaction to you not wanting children? Um, So I always say I got very, very lucky with Nick. Um, He's an amazing guy. He's a great guy. He's super supportive in everything. And before we got married, we did have that big conversation when we started to get a little serious of having kids, because at the time we both wanted them. And it was like, okay, we both want kids. Da, 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 da. And then we were married about a year when I woke up and was just, you know, I sat him down and I just said, I really don't think I want children. Mm-hmm. You know, I know this is something we talked about. I'm really sorry to flip it on you because in a way I was like, maybe that's not fair on him. We had already had this agreement, I guess you could say of having children. And he was really cool about it. He was just like, okay, yeah, that's fine. We don't have to have kids. doesn't really bother me. So I think for him, maybe it was more of, if we have kids, we have kids. If we don't have kids, we don't have kids. I think he was just sort of either way, but as time has progressed, I think he's really, really like, you know, been happy that we've decided to be child-free. I think now he's kind of seeing and you know, for himself, I think he had that self-awareness of, yeah, I just, I don't think I want to be a dad. I don't think I want to deal with all that. Um, and I had even told him, you know, if you're very adamant about having kids and this is something that we can't, you know, we don't agree on, or if you don't feel the same way, we can separate because I felt it wasn't fair to him. If he really did truly, that was something he really, really wanted for me to hold him back from that. Um, but I, I just feel very grateful that he was kind of like, yeah, that's cool. I, I don't mind. Wow. So it worked out. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you already mentioned that you, you talked to your husband about this a year into your marriage. So prior to getting married, um, again, just kind of going back a little bit, were there like any inklings or things like that, that you may change your mind about not wanting kids? Um, oh gosh. Like going back to if I would actually decide to have kids, is that what you mean? Or right. Um, No, I, once I think I realized this was not for me, I was all in, Um, you know, even seeing, for example, my sister-in-law and what she goes through. I mean, I'm not saying pregnancy is a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's awesome to watch her, you know, go through those changes. And, but I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't want (laughs) to, I don't want to do that. Um, And I always, I mean, my husband and I, we've always even said the only way we would ever have children is God forbid something did happen to my brother and my sister-in-law, I would absolutely take those kids in, open arms, love them. But that is probably the only way that we would become parents at this point. And hopefully, you know, that doesn't happen. Um, but we we both, I don't think we've ever had that wishy-washy. I mean, I even went as far as talking to doctors about getting a tubal ligation and everything. So I think once I was in, I was all in that this is what I want. How did that conversation go with your doctors? Did they try to gaslight you or anything like that? Yeah, no. Not good. Um, it's interesting because it's almost like I don't think they were being judgy, but I felt judged, if that makes sense. Um, because the questions that they, you know, they asked were very, you know, I feel like professional questions, obviously, that you would ask your patient. But at the same time, it was kind of like that. 
well, are you absolutely sure mm, you don't want to be a mom? Well, do you already have kids? Is that why you want to do this? Oh, well, maybe you should wait until you're a little older. So on one side, I got that professionalism. And then on the other side, I got that kind of, well, this isn't normal type of thing. Um, and I just, I talked to a couple different doctors and I kind of got that same response of, well, you don't have kids, you're not a certain age, you know, so we're not going to do it. And I even said, I will sign something saying, I won't sue you. I won't take legal action if I do change my mind later in life. And they just weren't having it. So <laughs> Yeah, first thing, I think that's the story for a lot of us that go in and try to get that procedure done. They say things like, oh, you're going to change your mind one day. Or in my case, I'm not married. So they, they say things like, what if you meet your person and he wants a child? I'm like, I don't care. It's my body. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's I've always thought it was not fair and a double standard because um, not to put my husband out there, but he got a vasectomy recently and it was not an issue for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're the same age, 34 years old. He walked in there, was like, hey, I want to do this. The doctor was like, okay, why? Like, do you have kids? No, I don't have kids. I just don't want kids. Okay, cool. No problem. Let's get it done. Wow. And I just was kind of like, it's interesting how women and men are viewed differently in that aspect where, you know, you can, a guy could walk in and they're like, yeah, all right, no problem. But I feel like women, it's sort of like, mm, you don't want to be a mom. That's weird. <laughs> and so relate. And I'm sure people watching can relate as well. So I'm quite sure I'll see a lot of comments later. <laughs> <laughs> So moving on to some more questions here. Um, so how do you handle situations where people may not agree with your child free choice? Like whether it's coworkers you may have shared this with or friends or some family. Um, well, to start off family, I got, I have an incredibly awesome family, very supportive. I went to my parents because, you know, I think a lot of parents want to be grandparents. That's the, that's the fun of it. You know, you get to have fun and do all those crazy things and, I just kind of went to them and I said, you know, this is what Nick and I decided and I'll never forget this. It really stuck with me. My mom looked me in my eyes and she said, well, that's fine. We're not going to be the one raising the baby. That's you guys are going to be raising the baby. That's going to be your life. So if that's not what you want, you know, your father and I are absolutely very on board with that. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of said, it's not your job to make us grandparents. That's not why we brought you into the world. And I think some of it helped because my parents, when they first got married, didn't want kids. Okay. And they changed their mind and decided they wanted kids. And I'm glad because I wouldn't be here if, <laughs> if they didn't. But I think that maybe kind of helped my mom and my dad understand that, hey, not everybody wants this. It's, and it's fine. Um, and I always said, well, my brother, Eric, he always wanted kids. And I, I think I even asked them, you know, well, what if Eric said he didn't want kids either? And they were like, oh, that's fine. Like, we just, we don't, I mean, obviously, you know, it'd be cool to be grandparents, but we don't really care. That's not your guy's job. Um, and my aunts and uncles, you know, I have a couple with that I'm really close with. And when it was brought up, they're all like really, really cool with it, really supportive. Um, and my aunt even kind of gets upset when I tell her some of the conversations I have with complete strangers about it. She's like, well, it's not their business. You know, who are they to say that? And so I just, I, we have a really supportive group of people around us. My in-laws are very supportive. Um, and I think that's helped a lot. Okay. Uh, but it's funny because it's the strangers that you get the most like weird looks from people coming to work and, you know, you have patients, they come in for years and you build this rapport and they'll say, oh, are you married? Yes. How long have you been married? Da, 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 da. Oh, do you have kids? No, my husband and I don't want kids. And you can see that moment on their face where it's like, what? You don't, well, you know, why not? Oh, you know, it's just something we don't want. Parenthood's just not for us. And some of them sort of drop it. Others will kind of start with the, well, you know, you might change your mind. Oh, having kids is so beautiful. Well, who's going to, you know, take care of you when you get older? And, you know, you don't have kids to take care of you. So I always say, my husband, you know, we'll take care of each other. And really, I feel like when they start to get too personal, I try to steer the conversation in a different direction because it's not their business. It's not their life. It's my life. And anything that they may say isn't going to make me change my mind. So I'll just politely steer it in another direction. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of us, you know, being child-free can relate to those comments or side eyes and yeah. And strangely enough, like you said, they do come more from strangers yes. than anybody. <laughs> yeah. And I notice it's the older or older clients that come in or patients. The younger ones are kind of like, oh, okay. 
But I feel like the older ones, because that's what they grew up with. That's what you did. You got married, you had a family. So maybe they don't understand it as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, understandable. Um, so are there any unique opportunities that you may have experienced as a result of being child free? Um, I think for us opportunities, I think if it came up to it, just that fact that even with work or if we just wanted to get up and move, you know, you can, cause you're not like, oh, so-and-so has to finish school or we're going to take so-and-so away from their friends. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, you could just get up and move. We can at the last minute decide to take a vacation. One week I had a really bad week at work. I came home on a Friday and Nick was like, all right, pack your bags. I booked us a weekend here, you know, let's go. And we grabbed our little dog who is like our kid. <laughs> and we, you know, we went, um, and just that opportunity, we can, pretty much do whatever we want, whenever we want. There's nothing really, you know, making us have to say, oh, well this weekend we have to do this or that. Um, so we, we just we just really enjoy that flexibility and that freedom that if we wanna get up and go, we can get up and go. Awesome. I'm just curious, just being nosy a little bit here. <laughs> Where did he take you? I think that was- um, So he took us to, took, took us, took me to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, we really like history. We're a little bit of history nerds and we just went for a weekend. They had a pet friendly hotel. We just walked around and relaxed. The dog loved it. Um, but it, it was just really nice that it was like, okay, I had a bad week and I, we don't have these obligations of having to do other things, even when we're drained or tired and we could just get up and go. And it's only about an hour away. So nice. And you know, what's crazy is sometimes those 48 hour or 72 hour trips are more fun to me than the, the week long vacations. Cause it's like, you can get more. Oh, yeah. You can get more done, I think. Yeah. And you're not as tired when you come back. Exactly. Yes. Well, yeah, thanks for sharing that. Now, do you have any advice for, for um, couples or child-free um, married people or even engaged that you may want to share with them? Oh, yeah, I definitely do. I actually wrote some of it down. Um, you know, I feel like if this is something that you've truly decided that you wanted, you've really like doubled down and you're like, I want this, go for it do it, you know, do not let others sway your decision because maybe it's not socially acceptable or it's weird or selfish. You have to do what's best for, for you and the people around you at the end of the day. And, you know, if people think it's selfish, be selfish, be selfish in that decision to not have children. It's okay to put you first. I think that's totally fine. And, you know, it's not a big deal but just be sure that it's definitely, you know, a hundred percent, that's something that you want. Um, but if you do embrace it, go for it. Everybody's path in life looks different and, and that's perfectly fine. There's more than one way to live a happy, fulfilling life. You don't have to follow that normal, you know, direction that people go in or that people deem the average be different. It's fine. <laughs> yes. Thank you for all those points on your advice there. And something you said really stood out in terms of being normal. I just want to know who made up these rules as to what's normal and what's not normal. Like, <laughs> <they're> just, <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> I feel like, you know, going way, 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 way back, it was just, okay, you know, women especially get married. You have a lot of children and you stay in the house, you take care of the house. And I just feel like as the years progress, that mindset never really changed. And yeah, I don't know who started it, but... <laughs> I just feel like we haven't, it's, you know, it's, it's okay to change and it's okay to be the people to help that change. Exactly. And um, I think my other piece of advice is, you know, just because you don't want kids doesn't mean you don't like kids or you're saying parenthood is bad and you're putting parents down. No, I think parenthood is great if that's for you. And I love kids. I mean, I worked in a childcare for seven years. I adore kids. I'm so excited to spoil my nephew. I can't wait when he gets here. I, I love him so much already. So don't let people make you feel like you're judging them because they have kids mm -hmm. and, you know, be, be proud about your decision. You know, talk about it on social media. If people tell you, you talk about it too much. I don't care. You don't tell people to stop posting their kids or stop sharing those moments they have with their children. Be obnoxious about it. Who cares? <laughs> I was going to say, when they say you talk about it too much, I would say talk about it some more. <laughs> that's, that's what I said. Somebody was like, oh, you post too much about it. And I was like, well, why does that bother you? 
I don't tell you to stop posting about, oh, I took my kid to the zoo today. I love seeing that. Good for you. That's great. Right. Yep. I totally agree with you. Well, this was a great conversation. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this. And is there anything that you would like to uh, promote here or I guess any final thoughts? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about supporting child free people and, you know, everybody living their life differently. I don't have anything too exciting to promote. I mean, I have my Instagram. It's uh, Nicole.Mally uh, and it's Mally is spelled M-A-L-I-H. Um, not too much exciting stuff going on over there, but you can check it out if you want. <laughs> Say it again, Nicole dot Mally. Dot Mally and Mally is spelled M A L I H. Gotcha. I'll make sure to put that in the description. And um, again, so thank you so much for this conversation. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it.